It's a really uh, difficult time for a fire because people are sleeping early morning on a Sunday. West Metro firefighters had one very busy weekend. They battled not one, but two fires. One of them turned out deadly. The other dozens of residents lost everything. The larger of the two fires occurred Sunday morning in New Hope. While no one died in that fire, one person is recovering in the hospital. And as Sonia Goins reports, the focus on Monday turned to residents trying to cope with the devastation. West Metro fire investigators say an appliance caught on fire and quickly spread. You can see the devastation behind me here. Residents had to rush out of the burning buildings with nothing but the clothes on their backs. The fire started on the first floor and quickly went to a three alarm fire with at least nine other fire departments from the Northwest Metro helping to put out the flames. There was heavy smoke showing from the front of the building and fire which quickly spread to the second and third balconies. On Sunday, officials evacuated the entire building. Six apartment units are destroyed and nine others are impacted. At this time right now, the first floor and the fire units themselves are uninhabitable. The Red Cross is assisting dozens of people affected by the fire. It just looks really sad because I'm like, dang, like, where did those people go? Are they okay? And I was terrified. Because I said, that's in part, that's where my mom stay. She's the daughter of Robbinsdale School Board member Sharon Brooks, who is out of town on school business. I know it's on the side of the building that I live on. Brooks will have to wait until she returns to see just how bad her place was damaged. My heart goes out to my neighbors. I have really good neighbors. I'm so sorry that this happened to us. This is tragic. For myself, you know, I, I know that I have to keep going. Meanwhile, fire investigators say this could have been much worse if it hadn't been for Good Samaritans helping out and people paying attention to the fire alarms. When you hear your smoke alarms going off, please exit the building and as soon as possible. People do come become complacent. In New Hope, Sonia Goins, CCX News. The New Hope fire was preceded by a deadly fire in Crystal. The West Metro Fire District also responded to that one early Saturday afternoon. Firefighters arrived to find a home fully engulfed. They later found the body of an elderly woman inside the home. The woman's identity has not yet been released. Preliminary evidence points to the fire starting accidentally. Brooklyn Park Police have arrested a St. Paul man for possessing theft tools used to remove catalytic converters. The arrest followed a police chase early Sunday morning. Officers initially responded to a suspicious vehicle in the 6500 block of 66th Avenue North. When officers arrived, they heard metal fall to the pavement and witnessed the vehicle speed off. Officers tried to stop the vehicle and had to use a special chase maneuver to make the arrest near Interstate 694 and Brooklyn Boulevard. Theft tools for removing catalytic converters were recovered from the vehicle. Brooklyn Park Police say thefts of catalytic converters have reached epidemic proportions. The city is on pace to set a record for such crimes, taking in 100 catalytic converter theft cases so far this year, including in our own CCX Media parking lot. The device is located underneath your vehicle and is used for reducing gas emissions. It contains valuable precious metals. In addition to recovering theft tools, police also recovered a gun in the area where police first spotted the suspicious vehicle. A shooting late Sunday night near a Brooklyn Park strip mall remains under investigation. According to witnesses, two people started shooting at each other. Police later recovered evidence of 14 rounds fired. No injuries were reported and as of midday Monday, no arrest had been made. Golden Valley police, meanwhile, are asking for help to locate a driver who severely injured a pedestrian. The accident occurred in the early morning hours last Wednesday on a frontage road near the Audi car dealership. Police are looking for a light colored 2015-2016 Toyota Yaris with damage to the front end and windshield. They are also looking for the driver, described as a woman in her early 30s with blonde hair. Police say the woman stopped to help the 18-year-old pedestrian, even driving the victim to his residence, but did not report the accident to police. The victim ended up needing to go to the hospital. Anyone with information is urged to contact Golden Valley Police and they may remain anonymous. The city of Maple Grove is taking a closer look at the sound coming from Highway 610. The city is discussing whether sound walls are needed along the Highway 610 and Rush Creek Boulevard area. There are homes in a walking path in that area. The city report said after a noise analysis, 17 locations within the project area were identified as having the criteria needed for a sound wall. 
It also says there is interest from a homeowners association about a sound wall. The council meets in a work session to talk about options this week. North Hennepin Community College is showcasing student art this month. The exhibit features artwork created by studio arts and graphic design majors. There will be awards announced this week for the show in 11 different categories. What's nice about having a, kind of a, a show return to the campus gallery is that the students that work in three-dimensional mediums and or are doing like package design work, having the physical object in front of us to be able to look at in kind of the round and be able to see it from different angles uh, just creates a, a more pleasing experience, I think, for all of us to see like what students are making and doing in other classes. You can see the artwork from now until April 21st in the Joseph Gazzulio Fine Arts Gallery on campus. The event is free and it's open to the public and we'll leave you with a closer look at the art you can enjoy. The Montana baseball team is looking to get back to the state tournament after missing out last season. Jay Wilcox has a preview of the Trojans. One of the themes for the Wyzetta baseball team this spring, little things can lead to big things. Attention to detail and practice drills is important. One of our main goals this year is to just work hard in practice even if coaches aren't watching us and just uh, keep hold, e hold each other accountable. Well, I think they have to buy into it because that's what we're selling. And so, uh, you know, we, we use examples from professionals where uh, even in spring training, professional players are doing basic fundamentals, how to tag up from third. You know, they're doing ground balls on their knees. And so, you know, we, we try to sell that to these players that, you know, you're never too old, you're never too good for basic fundamentals. On the field, the Trojans will have a lot of new faces in the lineup after graduating much of last year's strong team. Uh, we see a lot of young talent with this group of guys this year. Um, we have eight seniors this year, but we're seeing a lot of upcoming talent from the juniors and the sophomores even. You know, I see kind of a renewed sense of energy. We graduated 15 seniors last year, and we're bringing back some pretty core players, but, you know, there's just a lot of new fresh energy, and, and that's always exciting to see. Among the key returners are University of Minnesota recruit Drew Berkland, a three-sport standout. Pitcher Quinn Ask, and outfielder Alex Wayne. The Trojans are rated fifth in Class 4A in the preseason. They were number one for a portion of last season, but fell short of reaching the state tournament. We started hot last year, started 8 0, and kind of uh, did a little cold stretch for the, towards the end. So I think we're looking to start hot and carry that over the rest of the year. There isn't as much hype about Wyzetta baseball as there was at the start of the 2021 season, but the Trojans hope to be peaking when it counts in June. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. The Trojans are scheduled to open the season next Wednesday, April 13th at home against St. Michael Albertville. The Park Center softball team has a lot of young players who are eager to learn this season. Here's Jay Wilcox with more on the Pirates. The numbers are up in the Park Center softball program. The pandemic set them back and the Pirates were able to field only one team last spring. They are looking to field multiple levels this season. We built up for a couple years there and we were up to 42 people playing and uh, we're going to play on four teams the COVID year 2020 and uh, now we're back up to about that level as well. We got 39 players uh, registered as of today and uh, looking forward to having two probably three teams as, uh, as we move forward here. So, There are a lot of players new to the sport, and the veterans are excited to work with those eager to learn. It brings back memories of when they were starting out. It definitely does. Just seeing everyone, you know, kind of learn the basics as we go, it's just like, it kind of makes you remember, you know, when you started playing when you're like eight, it's like, wow. But it's nice to be able to teach other people because, you know, I have so much love for the sport, and it's nice seeing other people gain that same love for it. 
Yeah, it's really exciting. I love to see everyone come in and like have determination and a good work ethic. So I love that. And also, as we had a small team last year, we had good chemistry. So a lot of the girls returning will have good chemistry and then bring everyone together. This is, this is softball 101, teaching them how to catch and throw and run the bases and hit the ball. They're sponges at this point and they improve tremendously every, every practice, every week. Though they had some ups and downs last spring, the Pirates did get a taste of success in the playoffs, winning two games in section play. They are now back in the biggest class, 4A, after competing in 3A in 2021, but hope that playoff run can provide a spark this spring. Some of the Pirates got a chance to play during a team trip to Florida this week. They'll be ready when the season gets started back here in Minnesota. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Thanks, Jay. That's all for sports. I'm John Jacobson. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.